good day everybody I know it's been quite a while but um, I have been extremely busy as most of you know I'm working with some pigments and uh, it's uh, taken off pretty pretty fast and, and crazy so um, I am finding finding it very hard to kind of find time to do my videos so I was going to do this and just uh, show you what I'm doing so what this is is just a timber piece of um, a round kind of a timber piece and I've got a bowl that let me just do a bit of a wipe that's supposed to sit in there okay so it's like a server so you put some, uh, I don't know, you can put some, well, I'm from Europe, so I love my bread and my olive oil and, you know, some um, some nice balsamic vinegar you put in there and then nice hot bread and you dip it in and some olives and cheese and yummy. So, but you can use it for whatever cheese, or maybe some strawberries with some nice chocolate sauce in the middle. Yummo. So what I'm doing now is I've just got uh, an electrical tape here. And I just want to kind of um, block this area where the, the bowl's going to sit. So that's all I'm doing is just blocking that area. And now I'm just going to go around with my little knife and just cut kind of inside it. And then pull that, pull that off. So that should pull off real easy. If some of it kind of slides down there, I'm not terribly worried about it because the bowl is a bit the bottom of it it's a bit smaller so it'll fit in there nicely so what I'm going to do is just going to go around and, and cut 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 that up and uh, so I'm just going to press right against it and then I'll oh, see I didn't do it real good I'm supposed to go all the way up to the edge and somehow I didn't do that okay let's do that again I want it to be right and um, it is not happening at the moment so okay let's try and do it better this time what I'll do is I'll just go, go like so and then I'll probably have to lift this bit up so do it right my mother always says she was a, a um, dressmaker for many, many years and she always used to say measure three times and cut once and so I didn't measure anything. I just decided to just go ahead and do it. Um, I need something that's going to be good to push this in and I'll use my little stirring stick. There we go. That's better. So it goes all the way to the edge and then um, push that right right to the other side so what I'll do actually because I'm not really getting it right in there this side's okay it's just this one's not as good so that's fine what I'll do is I'll just cut up here rather than down there to be sure to be sure this should work and then go all the way around and then push that down. Okay, so now let's see when I lift it, what happens. Oops, got to cut that bit there. Can you see what I'm doing? Okay. So let's just go. Alright, so that worked out pretty good. Now I haven't primed anything. Um, not too bothered with priming. Um, resin is usually pretty good at sticking to anything uh, except for this tape and sort of silicon things, oils, it won't um, stick to them. So timber it's going to be fine. And this um, has been varnished, it looks nice and smooth and it looks like it's been varnished. So. Um, it's, it's almost like primed anyway so so that's a good thing 
we hope. Okay, so now that I've done that, I can go around with my stick and just push that down like so. Whoops. Make sure that that's all the way in there. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going to get my my pigments ready and, um, and my resin ready and I'll be back. Okay, just um, I forgot to put the electrical tape around the edge because I, I want to contain the um, all the the resin on top. So this is how I do it. I don't know if you can see. Come a little bit closer this way. And so what I do is I just pull it because if you you kind of pull it while it's uh, down, it will it will bend inwards, and you don't want that because it catches. The, the resin so what I do is I put, hold my finger there and then I pull this tape and then I kind of just go around it nicely placing it so I'm um, I'm only leaving maybe about two millimeters up the top that's all I want um, I find that if I do it too thick if I do it too thick um, sorry if I do it too um, if, I, if I make it too high it, um, it bends inwards and we don't want that to happen so you can sometimes even just go like that to pull it out a little bit so that's that now I'm going to go ahead with the resin put this aside so here we go for all the newbies out there um, I've got my cup I'm not going to need a lot for this one maybe about Oh, about 90 milliliters. So, if I need any more, I'll just um, add more afterwards. So, 90 milliliters. This is two parts to one part. So, I'm just going to do the one part now, which is a 30 mil. And I'm watching my scale because 30 mil is not a lot. Here we go. That's about there. And every resin company always allows one percent two percent you know if you make a mistake so don't worry about it too much that was 30 mil and i should bring this one up to 90. Ooh, it just went over by four now i could go back again and just put a couple of drops of of my part a no sorry part b but i won't I'm just going to leave it as is because I know that it's going to be okay. So the resin that I'm using here is Aldex Crystal Cast. I um, I really like this resin because uh, it's uh, it's not too thick and it's not too thin. It's just right for me and uh, it allows me to work with it for a long time. I can stretch it sometimes up to an hour even just going back and forth heating it up and then it'll it'll kind of uh, allow me to to do more things and create different effects so um, and the weather outside is absolutely beautiful for Australian autumn it's sunny it's warm I've got air conditioner in in here uh, set at 23 degrees because I want that to to work really well with my resin so okay that's that's done they say mix for 30 oh, sorry mix for three minutes but there's no need obviously if you had a big bucket of them you, you'd want to mix it longer but as soon as you can see that there's no stringy bits in there it's just uh, lovely and combined it's ready to go okay Come back a little bit so I've got my recycled cups and I'm just going to um, arrange them so that I can place my board on there oh okay just got to make sure what's going on here I think this one's ah oh, that's why this one doubled up Silly me. Okay, so that should be right now. Okay. 
Am I lined up good? Yes, I am. Beautiful. So, I've got my resin. I've got my beautiful um, pigment pastes. These are low res pigment pastes. And I've got purple rain and sapphire blue. And I've got some of my white, angel white. Oh, and I actually have some on the lid. Um, which I'm going to use right now. So, with these pigments, oh, better lay it down there for a second. Let me just uh, put some resin in there. Okay, a bit of that, a little bit of that. Okay, and a little bit of the white, don't want too much of the white and leave some for for Ron as we say, for later on so what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of this white actually that's quite a bit in you go these are epoxy pigments for those of you who don't know so they've been formulated to to use with resin Okay, so you can't use them in acrylic paintings or pouring or anything like that. It's got to be um, used with resin. So I'm going to leave that there for a second and go ahead with my sapphire blue, which is another gorgeous color. In you go. Lid on. I'm going to show you a little trick in a minute. Um, just let me go and go with this beautiful purple rain in that goes as well. So let's start mixing. They mix really well. No trouble. But always be, be sure to check. And of course, because this is a paste, it's quite thick and it'll stay on your... Um, stick so I always just kind of scrape it on the side there and then pick it up and then give it another little stir you want to do that because if you use this this stick to you know do some effects um, you'll have the the residue of that um, paste there unmixed and it might uh, mess up your artwork so okay so that's that one that's done now mix this one a little bit And then finish with that one. So I'm not sure what kind of a design I'm going to do, but um, we'll see. We'll see. Sometimes I, I have a specific thing that I want to do, and sometimes I just go with whatever. Whatever happens, happens, and usually those ones work the best. I know that I'm going to be using my torch and my heat gun. That's the one thing that I know. Because you need them. People ask, why do you use both? Well, I use the heat gun because it gives me really cool effects. Um, and also, it, it kind of... Um, um, heats up the resin and it allows the, the bubbles to come up to the surface and then they pop but I don't use it specifically for for that purpose because the torch works the best okay here's a trick that I wanted to show you just got to make sure I've got the right color because see these pigments they are pretty dark see because they're very very um, deep the color so deep so what I what you can do is you can pop well, if you pop it straight directly on here, you won't be able to see, right? So get a little sticker, which um, you can have, get those round stickers or whatever, or you can just get a whatever sticker from a label and stick it on, on your lid, like so. And then get a little bit of your paste, not too much because you don't want to mess it up, and just kind of do that. You can swirl it around. And you can see the color. So I'll do the same with this one. Got a little sticker, just cut it. 
just going to make sure that you put the right lid on the right um, jar. And then I get a little bit of this purple rain, which is absolutely gorgeous. And it's so, so deep. So if you just put a little lump on it, you it'll still be dark. So you want to kind of swirl it around so that you can see what that is. You can see that that's actually that uh, lovely purple. Okay. So that is that. Little trick, little tip for you guys. Let's go and do something cool. Let's see, what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? All right, just gonna go around with the glue. Maybe here, like so. And maybe out a little bit. Oh, what the heck, let's go inside as well. Okay. And you can sit it there if you want, but you don't have to. And then I'll go around with this beautiful, beautiful purple rain. And you'll see it's going to look so dark on here, you won't be able to see what it is. On a white surface it's different, but once I get them blended and get some white in there, you'll, you will see them pop. That's enough for that one, and now I've got my white. So I'm just going to put a little bit of white in between and everywhere. So I'll just go over here. I usually use a syringe or a, um, a pipette. They work really well. Ooh, come on. Maybe I should have had a little bit more of the white. You can see that purple pop up now? See how gorgeous that is? So I'm just going around and I'm going to go around a little bit with my um, clear. So just going to turn this one I've rearranged my studio and I haven't leveled my table because I've got a different table here now. Um, that's why it's pulling to one side, but that's never a problem for me because all I do is just spin it around and uh, I actually don't mind a bit of uh, movement because uh, it'll, it, it just seems to be, you know, natural. Naturally goes where it wants to go. So I've got to leave a little bit of room here. So I don't want to kind of have too much of this on here. Oh, no, I dirtied my stick. No, I didn't. That's good. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use one of the sticks. Oh, see, you can even just do that. <laughs> and then cut it and stick it on the thing. Okay, so let's go. Just going to blend it a little bit. You can use your hand or you can use a stick. I find that... Um, hand is uh, usually the best tool for me but I don't want to get it caught in here so what I'll do is I'll swirl it a little bit just to bring it to the, the sides here and of course if you want to let this run then don't have a tape there so I'm just watching what I'm doing Oops, like so, and I'm going to go around the edge with the stick and just go like so, okay, because I want to make sure that that goes all the way to there. Now, of course, if I didn't have this thing in the middle that I'm trying to save, I could just very easily just flip that, tilt it rather than flip and then, you know, not worry about it but because I have this thing in the middle I'm trying to preserve it so what I'm doing now is just going around see how gorgeous that uh, purple rain is just amazing okay all the way to the edge that's what we want I will tilt it that way a bit 
it's going to help a little bit. So now for the middle, I will use my hands. Now see that? That's actually covered with resin. And you can actually see that piece of timber underneath, which I don't mind at all. It just looks very organic and lovely. So I'm just going to go around and do the other ones, the other bare bits, get them covered a little bit. So, oh, this is a first for me guys, I've never done anything like this before and um, it's, it's good to do something like that. Okay, let's get it heated, get a little bit of heat into it. Um, so this is my heat gun, I've just got an attachment that kind of just, I don't want to unattach it over the thing, oh my gosh it's really stuck, okay, so there you go. That is the attachment. Um, sometimes you get them, I bought them all together with, with the heat gun, so I don't know, um, you can always ask for them if they've got ones with the attachments. Um, here we go. Okay, I'm just going to put it on, on a higher speed now. Ah, that's cool right there. I managed to go inside. So let's just do that now since I've already gone inside. See, this is why I don't really do the, the tape because I feel like I'm limited with what I can do here. So I can probably just leave it as is now. But um, okay, not happy with that there. Just going to go around and do my lines, which is usually what I do. And this here looks a bit bare. Let's go with this white and bring it out a bit. I'm just going around and covering these timber bits because I did like it in the beginning but now I don't. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to grab some of this and pop it up there like so and I think I might add a little bit more of the white and then We definitely need a little bit more white torch. Oops. And the heat gun is way too hot now for me to take that attachment off. Attachment is great for bigger pieces, but not for small pieces like this. Let's give it a go. Oh, I love that. Look at that. Try not to melt the tape. I need to spin it around the other way now. I regret having that um, tape 
so I'm not happy with it. Okay. So, let's see what's going on. Got lots of little cells happening. I've got a lot of air bubbles here, they're all coming from that tape because I managed to get the resin on top of over the tape which was a bugger. It will come off, I hope. I'm just trying to scoop some out if I can. It's pretty dark. I think I used too much of the dark colours. Get some more of that white in there. Some more here. Alrighty. And torch again. Yeah, get rid of the bubbles. We don't want them. So this one I'm going to leave alone now, I just need my little pokey thing. Oh, where is it? I thought I saw a little bit of fluff. Sometimes you can just push them in and that works, sometimes you've got to dig them out. Okay, so that's that, I'm going to let that set a little bit. And then I'm going to um, go ahead and take the tape off and I'll show you the end result. Just give it a little more torsion in the middle. All those air bubbles are coming out from underneath the tape. Maybe that wasn't the best solution but anyway we'll see how we go. This might even just work just like that actually, we'll see. Let me see. Let me see if I can pull that tape out. Oh, it's going to be interesting because I think maybe, maybe it's going to work without the tape. Let me just try. I think it's going to work. Okay, guys. So th see, this is what happens. Sometimes things work and sometimes they don't work. So I am taking the tape out now. using my little skewer to pull it out. Ah, very sticky and slimy. Because I think it might actually leave me that groove in, inside there, which is what I need for my bowl. Okay, clean hands. All right. Put a little bit of purple in there, just a tiny little bit, don't want too much and I've got a tiny little bit of white left, I'm just going to whack it in the middle and then um, give it a little swirl. I know this was a very, very messy work. I do apologize. But, see, I wanted to share with you. And, um, and I'm learning as well. This is something that I haven't done before. So I think that will work just like that. Then I'm going to torch it a little bit again. Okay. It's always good when you've got that a bit of uh, freedom to do what you, what you want to do. Okay, so I'm going to put this one uh, aside now. I 
Okay, here we go. It's all done now and I'm actually quite pleased with it. I love this, the, the edge, how it's sort of done all that all by itself. So there you have it. Quite an interesting idea. Love how these, uh, the resin just keeps working. And this, um, the pigment keeps doing its thing. Look at that. It's just beautiful. With such little effort. Get this gorgeousness. Alright, let me know what you think about the video and this project. Um, I will be coating this with an FDA approved resin. Um, some of these pigments are FDA approved, but the resin wasn't. And the paste are not FDA approved, so I just, uh, I'm just going to put a coat of uh, FDA approved resin. And, um, and then it will be safe to use for food.